now seeing our first mid-course uh, charts, early estimates of what we will uh, what we'll be working with, numbers at mid-course, and like some seems to be a stopping point uh, for the action right now. We'll be back shortly. And so Apollo 8 is committed on its flight to the moon. We understand that the astronauts' wives uh, were obviously delighted with the success of the mission so far, and particularly the launch. And his was said to be tearful uh, as she watched the launch, and her four-year-old the space lift off about a woman home and much the same prayerful quietness there uh, mrs lovell and uh, their three older children were here at the in her lovell is uh, there with morley safer and perhaps we can call them in by satellite now this is jodrell bank in england morley the uh, more curious things on this astonishing day is that we're watching a BBC monitor over here, and they're talking about the courage of some men we're watching at this moment, and they're doing a motorcycle uphill climb at the astonishing speed of 30 miles an hour. <laughs> so, Bernard, aside from the astonishment we all feel at this moment, uh, what do you as an astronomer hope to achieve out of this mission? Well, I, I must confess that it's all very fascinating and very exciting today. But nevertheless, uh, from this particular mission as an astronomer, I think uh, we must look on it mainly as an engineering achievement. I don't think the science, as far as addition of our knowledge of uh, the moon, as far as the scientific investigation is concerned, will be all that much. I, I'm sure that the photographs which the astronauts will bring back and will transmit back will be quite spectacular and amongst the most wonderful pictorial things we've ever seen. Uh, but the orbiters and the landers they have already given us a very great deal of scientific information about the nature of the lunar terrain and the constitution of the surface. I think for a really significant addition uh, to that knowledge, uh, we will have to wait for the, uh, up until the Apollo ship actually lands men on the moon. And then that really would be terribly exciting, particularly when they bring the rocks back to Earth. I think then the astronomers will be especially interested from the scientific point of view in these Apollo flights. Uh, we will then, I think, be on the verge of settling the age problem of the total history uh, of the moon, and particularly what happened to it in the first million years of its history, uh, which is now somewhat obscure. Can we expect to learn anything more about Earth, about our own solar system? Oh, I think so. Uh, from the Apollo series as a whole, I think this is uh, exceedingly important. Uh, one of the few definite things we know about the solar system is that it was born about four and a half billion years ago. But we're not at all certain how it came into existence, neither are we certain that it is not unique. Uh, we believe, that is astronomers believe, that there are many other systems in the universe like our solar system. And in that case, there may be many other civilizations in the universe. These are the big scientific issues which are at stake uh, as these Apollo projects are pursued. Up, to, up until, I guess, uh, today, Sir Bernard, uh, Astronomy has been a kind of land-based profession. Do you think that your own uh, craft was, is going to change now? Well, I think it's been changing for the last 10 years. Um, astronomers are still moaning that so... Morley? The uh, more curious things on this astonishing day is that we're watching a BBC monitor over here and they're talking about the courage of some men we're watching at this moment, and they're doing a motorcycle uphill climb at the astonishing speed of 30 miles an hour. <laughs> so, Bernard, aside from the astonishment we all feel at this moment, uh, what do you as an astronomer hope to achieve out of this mission? Well, I, I must confess that it's all very fascinating and very exciting today. But nevertheless, uh, from this particular mission as an astronomer, I think uh, we must look on it mainly as an engineering achievement. I don't think the science, 
as far as addition of our knowledge of uh, the moon, as far as the scientific investigation is concerned, will be all that much. I, I'm sure that the photographs which the astronauts will bring back and will transmit back will be quite spectacular and amongst the most wonderful pictorial things we've ever seen. About the orbiters and the landers, they have already given us a very great deal of scientific information about the nature of the lunar terrain and the constitution of the surface. I think for a really significant addition uh, to that knowledge, uh, we will have to may wait for the, uh, up until the Apollo ship actually lands men on the moon. And then that really would be terribly exciting, particularly when they bring the rocks back to Earth. I think then the astronomers will be especially interested from the scientific point of view in these Apollo flights. Uh, we will then, I think, be on the verge of settling the age old problem of the total history uh, of the moon, and particularly what happened to it in the first million years of its history, uh, which is now somewhat obscure. Can we expect to learn anything more about Earth, about our own solar system? Well, I think so. Uh, from the Apollo series as a whole, I think this is uh, exceedingly important. Uh, one of the few definite things we know about the solar system is that it was born about four and a half million years ago. But we're not at all certain how it came into existence, neither are we certain that it is not unique. Uh, we believe, that is astronomers believe, that there are many other systems in the universe like our solar system. And in that case, there may be many other civilizations in the universe. These are the big scientific issues which are at stake eh, as these Apollo projects are pursued. Up, to, up until, I guess, uh, today, Sir Bernard, uh, astronomy has been a kind of land-based profession. Do you think that your own uh, craft was, is going to change now? Well, I think it's been changing for the last 10 years. Um, Astronomers are still moaning that so much money goes into space where we're still short of large optical and radio telescopes. Uh, but another group of astronomers have taken advantage of these new techniques. And uh, after all, only 10 days or so ago, the United States launched this marvelous orbiting astronomical observatory, uh, which has telescopes in space and is going to convey information of the universe, not of the solar system, which it would be impossible to get by uh, an Earth-bound instrument simply because those radiations are absorbed in the atmosphere. And it is these features of man's newfound ability to push things into, into space which is so important. That is, getting instruments and individuals shortly onto the moon and then possibly onto Mars, maybe Venus in the next decade or so, and also taking above the obscuring regions of the atmosphere the instruments which extend the information which we're getting with the radio telescope here and the optical telescopes to the uh, other regions of spectrum in the ultraviolet, X-ray, and gamma ray region, which are otherwise completely obscured uh, from, uh, from our view. Sir and Bernard? I think that... Uh, uh, go ahead. Excuse yeah. me, sir. Yes, Walter. Uh, well, I didn't want to interrupt, Sir Bernard. I, I... This may very well, as uh, uh, I believe uh, Jim Lovell put it, uh, by having a brain at the end of the arm that holds the camera, uh, get some pictures, targets of opportunity, so to speak, and perhaps uh, pictures of the uh, shadow effect uh, and uh, uh, zero shadow yes. effect also on the moon that uh, have not been uh, acquired previously. Do you feel that there, that there might be some small body of knowledge come back from this? Oh, I'm sure there will be small body of knowledge, but I think that uh, as the space agency themselves have emphasized, this knowledge will be of primary importance to the techniques of the Apollo craft, not only this one, but the future ones. Uh, you may well be right. I, I think it, uh, there may be some new information come back about the rills and the small craters, which may be helpful. But I think we're so close to the really major events of uh, getting the Apollo on the surface that these are going to help future ones. Uh, you may well be right. I, I think it, uh, there may be some new information come back about the rills and the small craters, which may be helpful. But I think we're so close to the really major events of uh, getting the Apollo on the surface that these are going to fall into insignificance between the actual recovery of lunar material, which we can analyze here. Uh, th this is really the next major step scientifically. Yes, uh, what I was going to say is that, uh, uh, for my, my previous question, that uh, we, we, it's, it's idle to pretend that our knowledge of the universe can be obtained only in the optical and radio part of the spectrum. We 
Realize now, ever since the first Sputnik and the first explorer, that whole new regions of uh, the spectrum are now open to study, purely from the astronomical point of view.